Hello, my name is Brandon Waller from Watch One Productions. Today we're going to do a short demo of the VX2000 Pro from Novastar. So let's jump right into it. Here on the front panel, we have all of our sources on this side of the processor. We have our screen, which has all the display information, shows you the active ports, shows you the frame rate, shows you your screen resolution, your brightness, all of the same stuff as your VX1000. On this side, we have a couple extra buttons that are not on the VX1000. We have all three of your layers, which if you hit the scale button, you can scale each individual layer. We have your presets where you can change your presets. We have the freeze button, but we also have the test button, which gets you to your test patterns quickly, and an FN button, which gets you to customizable functionality. Now let's go to the back of the processor. On the back of the processor, we now have 20 ports, which is a huge upgrade from the VX1000 only having 10 ports. Each one of those ports is still at 650,000 pixels, which is great, almost double the capacity of the VX1000. Additionally, we have added HDMI ports. Now we have two HDMI 2.0 ports, as well as four HDMI 1.3 ports, which is great for layering and adding different sources in. We also have Display Port 1.2, we have SDI port in and out, Genlock in and out, and we have a light sensor capability as well with the VX2000. Additionally, we have four optical ports, for fiber optic uh, connectivity to other processors or coming from sources. We have our monitor out uh, to monitor all of our sources. And then we have our control. In the control, we have now two USB ports. We have audio in and out, as well as our typical USB port. So that gets us what's on the physical processor. Now let's jump into the Unico software. To get into Unico, all you have to do is open up a browser, type in the IP address, which you can grab from the front of the processor in the communication settings. When you do that, it should open up this screen and jump onto the web GUI. From there, if you're online, currently we're connected to the ethernet port on the back of the processor directly from the computer. When you do that, you should see the processor itself, the IP address, as well as a little green light and letting you know that the system is active. From here, when we double click, now we bring up the actual processor and what's connected to it. So here in green, we can see our two ports that are connected to the LED wall. We have the Ethernet control. We have our two HDMIs because we're running two computers right now and our power. What it doesn't show you from here is that we also have the USB device plugged into the front for an additional source. From this screen, you have all of your basic information. You have your uh, device information, your what mode it's in, your network settings, you here you can change it, but if you change it here, it will boot you out, and then you'll have to re-log in. Synchronization as to what source you want to synchronize uh, your uh, frame rate to, as well as your HDCP, time information, and then some basic uh, source input backup, and if you want to factory reset. From there, if you go into screen, this is where now you would program your screen information. We're already, we have it programmed for our LED wall, just for simplicity purposes, I'm not going to go through that, but I will show you kind of your basic setup. Here's all of your ports. It'll show you the active ports and what's connected to it and your line loads down here. Here's where we have the screen mapped. Over here, you can get to your test patterns. And if you turn the test pattern on, it will just automatically turn it on. Additionally, when you are doing your mapping, it will show you your mapping in real time. You do not have to wait. So if we go and connect this, it would actually show it in real time. On, on top of that, you have your low latency mode built into here. And then we have another tab for your uh, color uh, calibration, as well as your hue and saturation settings. From there, we can go into your brightness setting, set it to whatever you want, zero to usually around 50% and your gamma settings. And this is under our screen settings. So let's hand over to where the real power is under program. From here, we have all of our sources. Currently, we're just on one source on our back screen. And I have a couple presets set up already to show you how easy it is to switch to the sources and utilize multiple sources at once. So here, we just have a one source setup that's the whole screen dragging from HDMI 1. 
Here's another preset that I'm instantly changing our screen, which is another computer under HDMI 2. And then here is our new USB disc that's playing a still image. From there, we can do multiple pips. So we can have up to three layers playing at the same time, and we can switch in between, bring them to front, send them to back, very simply with the new GUI. Additionally, we can mirror sources and use the USB, say, as a backup for multiple screens on the same processor. So with the VX2000 and the 20 ports, each one of those gets 650,000 pixels. So the load capacity four panels on 2.6 mil panels, you can actually do 352 panels total with this processor, which is a lot of panels. Going from there, the new sources, we have a ton of HDMI sources, which give you three 4K layers or 12 1080p layers. We also have SDI, optical, and DP that we can choose from here, and then you can layer them appropriately on the GUI. With Unico, one of the new features that we've noticed is when you're in mapping, we can actually do L shapes, crosses, or Vs, and it won't take up the full line load, which is great because that allows you to do more custom shapes and not fill up line loads per each individual line. Another thing that we like and that we're probably going to start using with the VX2000 is the USB port as a backup even. So with this, a lot of times you have your processors, your computers, but every once in a while they can go dead. Now with this, you can use this as an independent source with a still image or a background or even a video layer. You can map it out here on the processor, have multiple layers or have a complex setup. So if one of your computers go down, you can easily switch to the preset that's already set up and have your backup running in the background. So that to us is a huge new addition, which is great for this processor. So that's our synopsis for the VX2000 Pro from Novastar. If you'd like to see a more in-depth video or want to know more about it, please comment below, follow, share, and like. Hit us up on our website, wywca.com. This is Brandon Walner from What You Want Productions. We'll see you at the next event.